Hey there. Are you intimidated by oil painting, but you've always wanted to give it a try? Stay tuned and I'll go over how to get started. Hi, this is Natasha Tuskovich. I'm here to share my journey in the world of art and fashion. So like, subscribe, hit that bell, and come back every week for more. While I was living in France, I had a lot more free time than I was used to. And I also became enthralled by the landscape. I had never wanted to paint the outdoors before, but I kept seeing scenes I wanted to capture. I was just amazed by all the beautiful scenery, the sunsets, the oceans, the mountains. I had to give it a try. Now, thankfully with YouTube these days, it's easy to learn what you need online. As a child, I'd actually had one of those paint by number oil kits, but I'd never finished it. And I'd never worked with oils freehand before. This meant that I had some idea that it required paint thinner and that it took a long time to dry, but that was about it. Now, I knew I wanted to get a kit that was designed to be portable as I wanted to learn to work outside. So thankfully I found a nice set in a quality box. I also grabbed some different size brushes and a big large brush to do the first layers. It's important with oils to do a thin first layer. You can't really tell here, but I had a thin pink layer on this board because I wasn't sure what I was gonna put on it. This particular canvas was painted months before I did this. You always want to work fat on lean, meaning the earlier layers should be watered down with turpentine and then progressively less so as you add each layer, while the final layer should just be straight oil paint. Or instead you can add linseed oil as you go or other oil-based mediums to increase the fat in that way. If you add a thin layer on top of a thick layer, you'll start to see cracking as they dry at different rates. Now, I love working with these stiff panels as they just make everything so easy. They're small and light. They're just really nice to work with. I watched a lot of tutorials and I picked up the supplies they recommended, including palette knives and a brush cleaning jar. I love the jar I have as it has a wire mesh at the bottom, which makes it really easy to clean the brushes. I also grabbed a big tin of turpentine and some linseed oil, which you can use to thin your paint instead. I was so worried at one point because I was renting a room from this lovely family and I didn't want to smell up the house with the strong odor, but thankfully they liked the chemically smell just like me. <laughs> now this painting I'm working on here is actually quite flat, but a lot of my work has been very thick in paint and three dimensional. With oils, it's important to use a medium to thicken it up instead of just more paint as the paint alone will take forever to dry if it's applied too thickly. I've used wax medium combined with extra white paint to thicken it mostly. There are other mediums, including painting butters, paste, and stone dust you can mix in. It's important to experiment with different mediums as they will all change the finish and the texture of the paint, making it more matte or different to work with, and they may even affect the color. Now my palette, you can see it's been building up paint for a while. I'll have to scrape it off eventually, but you can leave it going for quite a while. If you come back soon enough, the paint will still be usable because it takes so long to dry. Now I like making tape borders for my work. It just adds a nice clean border to the piece. One way to avoid paint spilling under the edges is by doing another coat after the masking tape is already on with the same background color or a clear gesso. That way the part that leaks through won't be noticeable. For this one, I actually had the tape on so long that I had to repaint the white border after I took the tape off because it was just sticky underneath. Oil paints are really great to use if you allow more than one color on your brush. It creates that wonderful natural effect and adds a lot of dimension to each stroke. If you pick your color palette, you can choose what colors are gonna blend nicely together. Especially for nature, using the organic feel of this way is important. So oil paint is just oil mixed with pigment. The oil creates a liquid paint that you can move where you want with your brush and keep it there once it dries. Acrylic paint is just pigment mixed with plastic. Now you can change the attributes using different mediums. You can make it dry quicker, be more transparent or glossier, depending on what you use. So it's kind of cool to investigate, look online, invest, just buy a couple and try them out. You'll find oil paints quite similar to acrylic in a lot of ways if you're familiar with that, but different in crucial ways too. The biggest difference, of course, is drying time. You've got a lot more time to work with oils. You don't need to be so quick or worry about it uh, setting where you don't want it. Now, I like to work with lots of paper towel handy, but some people manage with just a single rag. If you do use a rag, be careful as this beak can become flammable. The paper towel can too, but you're more likely to dispose of that quickly. If you're not like me and you don't like the scent, you can also use clear odorless mineral spirits. 
it's a little bit gentler on the nose. If you're not sure what colors you need to get started, it's a good idea to pick up an introductory set. It'll be cheaper than investing in artist grade paints right away when you're not really sure what you need. Or you might just want to grab a few individual tubes if you know for sure what you're going to be doing, if it's maybe florals or oceans, something with a limited palette. I definitely recommend getting a large tube of white if you're going that route because most artists go through the white very quickly. You may also want some pencils or charcoal to draw a base sketch and some larger canvases. This set actually came with a great mini sealed tin to keep paint thinner in when you're on the go, which is really nice for plain air. When you're done, make sure you set the painting somewhere safe so that it can dry and not be damaged and so that it won't get dust in the wet paint. Always test whether it's dry or not before you grab it. You don't want to ruin it when it's so close to being done. Some mediums can actually help speed up the drying time if that's important to you, but some will extend it, so make sure you check. When you're done, make sure you clean your brushes and put everything away to keep your brushes nice. Ensure you dispose of everything properly for your area. In most places, you're not allowed to pour paint thinner down the drain, for example, so make sure you check where you live. You can wash rags out with soap and water and hang to dry, but don't put them in the dryer as this can cause fires, even after they're washed. You can experiment with working wet on wet as well and work with the under layer of paint instead of on top of it. I do this a lot with my thicker and pastel florals where the texture is important in three dimensions rather than just in the visible application. Oil is great because it really responds to application. So if you're using a stiff brush versus a soft brush, a palette knife versus a brush, or a thick or a thinned out paint, it makes a big difference. It's really exciting to try something new and watch how the paint holds the brush strokes. Oil paints are wonderful because they have a natural finish with gloss to it, but it's not plasticky like acrylic can sometimes look. I actually just learned that you can get oil paper, which I'm also really interested to try in the future. If you're struggling with paint getting picked up by the underlayers when you're working wet on wet, make sure you remember to work thin to thick by thinning out your paint. If the top layer is getting muddied into the previous layer, the previous layer should be thinner or the top layer should be thicker. Obviously, if you've already done the underlayer, this is a little more complicated. Don't feel shy to actually remove the underlayer with a paper towel or a palette knife and just try that area again. Now, this is a little different from the term fat over lean, which refers to drying time as I was talking about earlier, and different thinners and mediums will change both. Basically, you want the outer layer to dry last and the more oil, the longer it takes to dry. So you want more oil in the top layers and less oil in the lower layers. If you use turpentine or other solvents, this will make your paint thinner and leaner. On the other hand, if you use linseed oil, this will make your paint thinner, but fatter. If you use a thick oil-based medium, this will make your paint thicker and fatter. So there's lots of different options to experiment with depending on what order you're putting paint down on the page and what effect you're looking for. As a side note, if you're working mixed media, you want to avoid putting acrylics over oil as they dry quickly and can cause the same drying out problems. Either way, you'll want to set out a palette of a few colors that you're going to use. Everyone always recommends grabbing the traditional primary colors, but this can be pretty outdated um, unless you're trying to paint a kind of traditional dark still life. For a more modern palette, I would definitely choose some bright colors and work with quite a bit of white. For florals, I like some greens. You want to make sure you have some yellow, orange, browns to mix in. Red and crimson for pinks, classic, and maybe purple or blue if you're doing a cooler palette. You can work out ahead of time what colors you'd like to focus on with a tool like the coolers.co website. This can help things from getting out of control when you just keep adding more colors and you're not sure what to put next or if things start to get muddy or if you run out and just have to mix more. This is me constantly. It could be nice to have an unbiased reference as it will look different on the canvas next to the other colors versus when it's mixed up in them and clean on the palette. Practice mixing different colors to really get a handle on how versatile you can get. And remember to include undertones to make the colors really interesting and realistic. Like I said before, a leaf's not just green for instance, it might have orange or yellow or brown in it. Now, one last thing, as I said earlier, Paint thinner is flammable and the oil paints themselves can be flammable along with many of the mediums. So even though I don't mind the smell, I do make sure to have the window open when painting so that fumes don't build up. You don't want to trap yourself for hours and then pass out or something. 
Make sure you're paying attention. Don't have open flames or candles burning while you're working. Technically, you can even avoid using paint thinner pretty much entirely if you prefer simply wiping the paint off your brush before switching colors, and you can wash your brushes with soap and water. And if you're painting all in one go, a la prima, you don't even need to worry about fat over lean. You can see here, if you're careful how you use the brush, making sure to clean your brush constantly as you go, you can do it all in one shot and it turns out pretty cool. So I hope you like this one. So you can see, it doesn't have to be that hard to get started. You can buy some limited materials, keep it cheap, and give it a go. If you do try it out, let me know how it goes. Leave me a comment, send me a link to something you painted. I'd love to see it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you learned something. Come back next week, give it a like, and I'll see you later. Bye now.